All right, listen up. This build is pretty good. What you do with it, you make sure your Devouring Orb is always up, and then you cast hammers every once in a while. The Devouring Orb ends up actually doing a lot more damage than you realize, and the hammers also deal way more damage than you realize. And what you're doing here is scaling up void damage, and specifically void damage over time. Now, Devouring Orb doesn't do void damage over time, However, the disintegrating aura around the hammers do, and you'll notice that we're not using Abyssal Echoes or Volatile Reversal because we haven't found anything that we need to use it on yet because the vast majority of things just fucking melt. As soon as we find a rare that actually takes a little bit of uh, work to kill, then we'll use Abyssal Echoes. And then when you see the damage numbers, then we'll explain why the damage numbers are so high, even though we're level 67 with absolute dog gear. Oh, here, check this out. So we'll come over here and then they just kind of like melt away. Here's a guy, Look, even without, even without using Abyssal uh, or even without using Volatile Reversal, which makes them de take basically triple damage. Uh, we're still able to like just murder things without really trying. So to explain a little bit, our gear is complete trash. Like it's complete trash. Like look, we're using a level 54 base scepter where do we just have random shit going on here? The only good things that we actually have, I mean, we have blue gloves, like what the hell? The only things we actually have that are good are these two. Are these two? Yeah, these three. So these three idols are good. So Abyssal Decay Duration, we'll get to that in a second, but it is multi it's a multiplicative damage modifier. And so I want as much of it as possible. And then Time Route's useful, activates a lot of synergies in the build, and we echo a lot and block effectiveness because we're using a shield. Now here's why the build does so much damage, and I'm honestly not sure what my fifth specialization is supposed to be. You can make it into an auto smiter you can make it into an auto smiter, like void smiter, hammer thrower, but I'd rather like not do that because this is like more of a damage over time build. But anyways, um, if there, yeah, if there are any specific uniques that you can use for the build, I don't know yet. I'm not onto that stage of the game yet. I'm still kind of solidifying and cementing the knowledge of all the base classes, and base type archetypes before I move on to actually adding uniques into a build. So. Abyssal Echoes is broken, and here's why. It's because of these notes in particular. So baseline Abyssal Echoes puts a debuff on something when it touches it, and then when that something with that debuff gets hit by a hit, then the full damage uh, of the Abyssal Echoes proc on that enemy gets procced. And so what we want to do is couple that with the fact that hammers hit, and then also have hammers due to disintegrating aura because abyssal echoes even though all the damage is at once it still counts as damage over time and it scales off of vitality so what we do is make it echo at a location the fact that it uh goes off more than once is actually a node in its skill tree and you can make it echo five extra times so it's going to be a six total procs and on the way you basically make it do double damage. Now the OP thing about Abyssal Echoes specifically is Abyssal Decay Duration. Now we'll, we're gonna read, now we're gonna read Abyssal Echoes very, very carefully because there's a very slight nuance here that makes Abyssal Decay Duration multiplicative and not just additive damage. Enemies with Abyssal Decay take void damage over time for six seconds, not over six seconds, for six seconds. So that's every single second for six seconds. So everything is based on, and now <laughs> it's kind of hard. I can't properly put it into words, but that means, but that means that if you increase the duration, the full amount of damage that Abyssal Echoes actually is higher. And so if you, and the fact that we consume that entire duration when we hit something with Abyssal Echoes on it means that the amount of damage they're taking is higher. So if we increase the base damage of Abyssal Echoes to this, and then we add on, say, 100% duration, that means it does this much damage now. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. Which is why I'm like, oh, wait, these idols are like, I know it's diminishing returns, but these idols are pretty much multiplicative damage sources for our highest source of single target damage. Now, here's the other part, is Volatile Reversal. Uh, all you wanna do with this is make it recover your mana because that's the biggest problem with the build at the moment is mana sustain. 
But what you also want to do is make it cast a void rift on arrival and a void rift at the start of it. So we can look at that here. You can see the two purple like circles that go off. Now these void rifts both make enemies hit by them, take 60% more damage over time and make enemies take, this is going to be 30% more damage flat. So they're going to take 60% more damage, which is multiplicative and 120% more damage, which is multiplicative coming to a total of 180% more damage taken from overtime sources. And Abyssal Echoes is again an overtime source, and so is Disintegrating Aura from the Hammer Throws. It's pretty OP. The reason why we use Devouring Orb specifically is that we want it to orbit around us, we're a little bit faster, and we're gonna have it help proc all of the Abyssal Echoes debuffs, right? It just like naturally helps out with that because what you do with Devouring Orb is you make the orb itself deal damage on impact. And so everything that gets touched by this orb is actually getting hit. It's hit damage on this. And all the Void Rifts that spawn from Devouring Orb when you kill something around you are also AOE hit damages. So those also proc Abyssal Echoes. It's a very unique kind of play style. The blessings, dude, I have, I, I don't really have anything. But you know, of course, Void Knight has Void Damage Leech and that counts as damage over time leech. So our leech is incredible. It's vitality stacking. So you just get as much vitality as possible. I'm gonna get more echo chance. I don't really think you need this 10% for 10 points, but th there's, I mean, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot. Anyways, this is probably the most unique sort of uh, damage scaling build that I've done so far and I wanted to share it. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Get out of here. Peace. Have a great time. Have a great day. Hope you feel appreciated and loved in your life. Um, peace.